People of God, let us gather by the river of life. We come to the river with our whole selves. In our sorrow, the river offers comfort. In our joy, the river rejoices with us. In our loneliness, the river provides companionship. In our uncertainty and pain, the river offers new life. Let us celebrate together the great gift of water God has given us. For thousands of years, indigenous people have lived in this land on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives, and we acknowledge the Beothic and Mi'kmaq people of this island and the Innu and Inuit peoples of Labrador and their stewardship of these lands throughout the ages. As settlers in these lands, we acknowledge our role in past and present wrongs we mourn the laughter silenced and the lives robbed and not recorded. We will continue to learn and to do our part to live into the ways of reconciliation. We endeavor to make this a safe time and place for all people to worship, regardless of racial or cultural background, nationality, creed, age, ability, economic status, sexual orientation, or gender identity. And welcome to worship. My name is Susan Shepherd and I serve the pastoral charge of Belle Island, Portugal Cove here in Newfoundland and Labrador. And today we're celebrating the last Sunday of creation uh, with River Sunday, as well as Orange Shirt Day. Let us pray. Today we wear orange to remember and honor all the indigenous children who went to residential schools. Today we wear orange and we pray for the residential school and intergenerational survivors who have still who are still struggling today we wear orange and we are thankful for those who speak the truth and who work to shine a light on injustice today we wear orange in the name of compassion and the spirit of truth and reconciliation help us god to remember and act on this and every day. Amen. Our first song today is There's a River of Life and it's number 160 in More Voices and it's written by a Canadian Mohawk composer Jonathan Miracle. There's a river of life that's flowing from God's throne a river of life that's flowing from God's throne. Won't you come on in and see this river that sets you free? Way a higher, way a higher, higher way. There's a river of life that's flowing from God's throne. A river of life that's flowing from God's throne. Won't you come on in and see this river that sets you free? Way a higher, way a higher, higher way. Now, whether you take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, listen to these words now for the meaning they hold for you on this day. And our reading today comes from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 16. Directed by God, the whole company of Israel moved on by stages from the wilderness of sin. They set camp at Rephidim, and there wasn't a drop of water for the people to drink. The people took Moses to task, give us water to drink. But Moses said, why pester me? Why are you testing God? But the people were thirsty there for water. They complained to Moses, Why did you take us out of Egypt and drag us out here with our children and animals to die of thirst? Moses cried out in prayer to God, What can I do with these people? Any minute now they're going to kill me. God said to Moses, Go out ahead of the people taking with you some of the elders of Israel. Take the staff you use to strike the Nile and go. I'm going to be present before you there on the rock at Horeb. 
you are to strike the rock. Water will gush out of it and the people will drink. Moses did what he said, with the elders of Israel right there watching. He named the place Massa, testing place, and Meribah, quarreling, because of the quarreling of the Israelites and because of their testing of God when they said, Is God here with us or not? Amalek came and fought Israel at Rephidim. Moses ordered Joshua, Select some men for us and go out and fight Amalek. Tomorrow I will take my stand on top of the hill holding God's staff. Joshua did what Moses ordered in order to fight Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. It turned out that whenever Moses raised his hands, Israel was winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, Amalek was winning. But Moses' hands got tired. So they got a stone and set it under him. He sat on it and Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on each side. So his hands remained steady until the sun went down. Joshua defeated Amalek and its army that day. God said to Moses, write this up as a reminder to Joshua to keep it before him because I will most certainly wipe the very memory of Amalek off the face of the earth. Moses built an altar and named it, God my banner. He said, salute God's rule, God at war with Amalek, always and forever. May these words help us to learn from the past and listen for God's word today. So how difficult is it to be patient when you don't immediately get what you want? Our capacity for patience seems to dwindle each day as we are promised faster and faster internet connections. Remember the days when we actually wrote letters and waited weeks for a response? Now we are impatient when our text message isn't answered within seconds. The Israelites have been wandering in the wilderness for months and are becoming impatient that they haven't reached the promised land. Are we there yet? And just like children, bored on a long trip, they start complaining against God and Moses as soon as there is trouble. This week, the trouble is water, or lack of it. And yes, being without clean, reliable sources of water is both distressing and dangerous. God commands Moses to go ahead of the people and to use his staff, the one he used to turn the Nile to blood and to strike the rock and to strike a rock from which pure water stream. The people had challenged God when they said, is God with us or not? God responds by bringing life to the wilderness in the form of water. This is not the first time that the people have panicked and assumed death was around the corner, and it will not be the last. They, like us, will continue to perceive scarcity all around but it is in these times of crisis that push us, like them, to reaffirm our trust in God's presence. Now I'm wearing my orange shirt today as a sign of compassion for the survivors of the Indian, Indian residential schools and to say that every child matters. Orange Shirt Day began in Williams Lake, BC in 2013 and has since spread to schools and churches across the country. The commemoration takes its name from the true story of Phyllis Jack Webstead, who went to mission school for one year between 1973 and 74. She was all of six years old. Up till this time she had lived with her grandmother on the Dog Creek Reserve. While the family never had very much money, Somehow Granny managed to buy her a new outfit to go to the mission school. A shiny new orange shirt with string that laced it up in the front. Bright and exciting. Just like she felt to be going to school. At the mission school they stripped her and took away her clothes, including the orange shirt. She never saw or wore it again. 
the color orange has always reminded her that of that and how her feelings didn't matter how no one cared and how she felt like she was worth nothing the feeling of worthlessness and insignificance was ingrained into her and other indigenous children right from the very first day at mission school and affected the way that she lived her life for many years. Residential schools were church-run schools where approximately 150,000 Métis, Inuit, and First Nations children were sent between 18, the 1860s and the 1990s. The schools harmed indigenous children by removing them from their families, forcing them to speak English or French instead of their ancestral languages, disconnecting them from their culture and traditions, and forcing them to adopt Christianity in order to assimilate into Canadian society. The government and most of the denominations involved have since acknowledged that this approach was wrong, cruel, and ineffective. The United Church apologized to Indigenous people for its role in the residential school system on October 27, 1998. Ten years later, in 2008, the Canadian government offered its official apology. The effects of the Indian residential school system are long and lasting. Intergener intergenerational trauma, shame, and cultural genocide, to name but a few. The residential school policy was only one colonial policy imposed on the original inhabitants of this land. Many others, such as the Federal Indian Act, still exist today and continue to seek to kill the Indian. The United Church fosters a number of initiatives for reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. In 2012, the crest was revised to include the four sacred colors of the medicine wheel and, the, and a phrase in Mohawk which means, all my relations. Indigenous spirituality, leadership, and participation are vital to the church's life. Congregations are encouraged to acknowledge the territory that they are on, build relationships with indigenous communities, and incorporate indigenous themes into worship. The indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, North America, welcomed those who brought the Christian gospel to this land, and the indigenous faith communities were part of the formation of the United Church. However, the church also acknowledges the limitations of a, Christian root, a Christianity rooted in European origins and the profoundly negative impact it has had on the indigenous peoples of Canada. The United Church has apologized for this broken relationship and is actively working to heal it. Today there are indigenous communities of faith across the country. The United Church's Aboriginal Ministry Circle works with these communities to understand their needs, share their wisdom, and support and empower their people. Today's scriptures tell us that God is ready to respond to our needs and to inspire us to discover resources beyond our wildest imaginations. Amid our feelings of impatience and scarcity, feelings of unworthiness and anxiety, may we discover a vision of who we can become on a journey. May we also learn not to be bound by the past. Let us be open to reconciliation new ideas and ways of being that carry peace into our world each day. And let us pray. Holy One, you ask us to treat every child as we would treat you, to love every person as you have loved us. We are grateful that your power is rooted in love, not force. Your strength is displayed through community, not might. You have taught us to work towards a better world where all of creation thrives and where every child matters. On this Orange Shirt Day, we remember Phyllis Wibstad as a child 
and the stolen childhood of all the children forcibly raised by church-run institutions known as residential schools. We lament how these institutions stole from children the opportunity to grow in a safe and loving environment, stole from elders the opportunity to share their teachings and wisdom with younger generations, and stole from communities the opportunity to live intergenerationally. We mourn the children who never made it home, the communities that were destroyed, the broken hearts, the stories never shared, and the shattered relationships. We ask that you provide comfort to all who are seeking healing and who daily wrestle with the ongoing harm, harmful legacy of these colonial institutions. Strengthen, strength to all who name how colonial powers have harmed us as peoples and as nations, often at a greater personal cost, and courage to all who are working towards reconciliation. You remind us to always welcome and care for children. We remember your children today. We lament and acknowledge the sinful ways that colonial powers tried to eradicate indigenous cultures within Canada, breaking indigenous families, removing children from their homes while destroying communities. And we pray for healing so that we who live together in this country can also work together to build a better future where all children are cherished, beloved, and given what they need to thrive so that we may treat all children as we would treat you, our beloved. May it be so. Amen. And let us pray together the Abba prayer, which is written in the spirit of the Lord's prayer. God, heart of the world, revealed through every aspect of creation, understood through our awareness. May we honor the holiness of creation and act accordingly so that your love is reflected in the way we live. May we always be thankful for the food we eat and the friends we have. May we forgive those who transgress against us and be forgiven for our own. In the freedom of love, may we live as your heartbeat and not be compromised by hesitation. Through our freedom, may your justice be seen and heard and experienced forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing together River Running in You and Me, number 163 in More Voices. River running in you and me, spirit of life, deep mystery, dancing down to the holy sea, River run deep, river run free. River laughed on my birthing day. Wind and water joined in play. Soaked my soul in the shining spray. River run deep, river run free. River cry my name to me. Lend me hope and memory. Sing me the story of the holy sea. River run deep, river run free. I stand on the edge looking down. Too scared to swim, afraid I'll drown. Give me the courage to journey on. River run deep, river run free. Journey far from my home, river break this heart of stone. Teach me to love, make me your own, river run deep, river run free. Hold me close on the day I die, bear me up when my soul is tired. Carry me home on the rising tide, river run deep, river run free. River singing in you and me, spirit of life, deep mystery. Catch us up in your melody, river run deep, river run free. Thank you for joining us for worship today. Um, I had to record this a week ahead of time because I will be in Ontario when you're watching this. Um, so I couldn't be home to do it. 
Next week we'll be celebrating Thanksgiving, so join us again. You are a sacred part of God's creation. God cares for you and is with you in times of abundance and scarcity. Just as water flows endlessly from the river of life, go out and spread God's love to all of creation. Amen.